in fact, we're, we're working on several at the same time. We're, the first one we're working on is uh, A Fighting Chance. And we're also working concurrently with the uh, Scream of the Eight, because Scream of the Eight will take longer. It's going to take next year. So we decided, hey, it's going to take a whole year. Let's get started for next year's. So, But we're going to film it this year, though, the principal photography for it. I've been working closely with the cast and crew. We're working on scripts. But A Fighting Chance, I'm very excited about this. It's a, it's definitely going to be some interesting storylines. Everyone saw A Razor's Edge, but you know, when I saw it, I raised a lot of questions. How did it happen? How did Razor's Edge come to be? So the prequel, A Fighting Chance, will explain all the events, all the drama, all the tension, that, that uh, all the uh, exciting elements that made uh, Razor's Edge as it showed up. And it, uh, it even surprised me. At, well, how, did it, how did the story unveil? And I, I started thinking about it. I said, this is exciting because there are, let us say, what was going on behind the scenes that Pepperstone, uh, Consular Pepperstone managed to get on the, uh, on the Crusader. So we thought we'll play with that. And we thought that uh, we should also show that things were different before Consular Pepperstone came on board. In fact, we get a chance to see the doctor at his war at his best was the magician, and what did he do to to uh, work work his magic, so to speak? So, say, so, hey, this is some pretty good. So, we we have uh, some very interesting drama, some new storylines, and new characters. How about that? That uh, really adds a nice mix there. You know, we thought we'll take like a, it was like the uh, Janice Rand, but. What if we could have a different type of Janice Rand? Janice Rand's older sister. What is she like? She's not the damsel in distress. She is the one, the, the power behind the throne that makes things happen. That she's very creative, very intelligent, uh, very motivating. Uh, her magic wand is her personality. And we thought we'll like to show in a fighting chance just how does she work her own magic? Not the type of magic of the Pepperstone, but the type of magic of the personality. And say, hey, now that would be good. That would be a great drama film. So yeah, we're very excited about that. Uh, we were so excited that we said, you know what? The old won't do. No, no. So we scrapped all our sets. Yeah, I know that sounds nuts, right? Say, so, well, you know, because when we were filming, they say, you know, when we're filming, we could do a little bit better. So we did. So we scrapped all our sets. We redid the chorus in the last three months from January to now. We, 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 we scrapped like our corridor set and then rebuilt it uh, the way we wanted so we could have more storytelling, more drama, more uh, 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 facilitates the more action scenes. So yeah, this is pretty darn good. Then we took the captain's quarters, but it's not really the captain's quarters. It is the crew quarters because it can be redecorated. Like in the original series, you know how they took that? They only had one, one crew quarters in the original series, but they were able to decorate it to be anybody's bedroom. And so we spent a lot of time and uh, passion and labor saying, we need to make this where we can move it around and change it around. And, and, and one of the things we did is that we said, you know what? We wanted one of those round mirrors. When I was a kid, I used to watch... Uh, the original series, and I was just fascinated with that round mirror. I mean, nobody had a round, uh, a round, uh, uh, what do you call it, closet in those days. They were all square, rectangular, but the one that we saw in the series kind of like spinned around like a lazy Susan, and you got to see different uh, shapes. They pressed the button, and wow, I said, can we do one of those? Do we even have the talent to do that? Well, we did. We created one, and uh, well, we're going to show some of that movie magic and that, uh, because we didn't realize what you can do with it. And then we said, well, now that we've created a rock closet, then you got to fix the setup. <laughs> so we started tearing the set down and, and just uh, with a labor of love, refixing it up. So it uh, even the grill, the captain's grill, we took the darn thing down. It was a plastic uh, playpen. And we took it down and we redesigned it based on uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, stories from uh, how other fans did it. And we got, PVC pipe and cut it to like a thousand pieces and then glued it together and spray painted it. So it looks awesome. So it's definitely uh, a, a different type of quarters. 
uh, than what you saw before and uh, it'll be more functional. And then we went to the science lab and we, the science lab was never finished. When you saw the razor's edge, you saw three walls, but you never saw the fourth wall because that's where the camera was, of course, right? You said, how cool would that be if we had a fourth wall? And what if we took that fourth wall and we decorated it with a lot of different uh, 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 vintage Star Trek wall computers? I mean, classic. Uh, so Jeff helped us out in that. We did, for the past three months, we've been talking ideas, sharing drawings, uh, draw. I make the chicken scratch drawings and he makes computerized drawings. They say, nah, nah, not that. Change it around, fix it up like this. And then we even had to make mock-ups. I mean, everything that you see on the set, we put it in, we actually made a mock-up of it so that we wouldn't embarrass ourselves, embarrass ourselves. We did the 3D print because you're, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're spending good quality time, plastic. So we did a, so the proof was in the pudding. So you do a paper, a paper mock-up, and then we actually uh, made the real 3D print. So when the 3D print was done, it was exactly what we had in, in mind, down, down to the fraction of the inch, exactly what we're going to see. And, uh, you know, we even fixed it up, you know, so it, uh, it should look good. And uh, we put that in Facebook. Uh, we're, we're excited and looking forward to it. And then we had a problem with our briefing room table because we wanted it big, besides so it's insane. We wanted the thing bigger, but we wanted it to look more like the original series uh, briefing room table. So we had to recut it, redesign it, make it bigger. And then we had a problem in our last film, Razor's Edge. We never had a room for the, uh, the, the briefing room. So we wanted the briefing room to have its own room where it would fit in. <laughs> <laughs> when we built our briefing room table, before we even built the briefing room table, uh, we did like uh, what uh, what do you call it? What the McDonald's did with a, you go ahead and you 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 put the measurements to make sure the thing is going to fit. I mean, it was going to be a tight squeeze. So we actually built in paper a a, a giant uh, table to make sure and put the chairs. Like, is this where it's going to fit? Is this thing going to fit? I mean, you're talking down to the inch, you know. I mean, you got to fit this giant over ten foot big table it's like putting what are you putting an elephant in the room with the elephant fit so we said yep okay we can build the table because the thing will fit and uh, we're going to show some uh some uh some pictures of it in fact we'll we'll see we can take this thing down there we can uh we can if your viewers want to see some uh or uh some uh, footage of it so you can see what it is but yeah i, I think it was a challenge uh but uh i think with the sets being what they are i think the to look a, a thousand times better from a, a razor's edge. And we think that if the sets look better, the actors will act better. And I think we rewrote the scripts to kind of reflect more of the, uh, the humanity essence of the story, if you will. Like I say, hey, no, this is, you know, this sounds cardboard because we, we rewrite our stories three or four times. Like the first time is okay, but it seems kind of like a rubbery, you know, and then we go through and we rewrite it again that, you know, before we have the table reset, this is kind of, is this going to be good? You know, it's a, is this what a human really being really say? So we really spent a lot, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about the scripts and, and really the verbiage that comes out. And then there's background. We, we do research on the background. So the sets kind of support the storyline to a point where they become philosophical. Because I remember Leslie Sorce said, man, Joe, you know, you put a lot of thought into us. Yeah. Like one of these days will show you like, there is a lot of, we try to put a lot of symbolism into the sets. So I get a kick when I watch the movies and stuff like that. Say, whoa, that you are telling a story and then there's symbolism behind it. And, and whoa, and did I mention Easter eggs yet? We love to put Easter eggs. Someone said, you know, if you got to do a film, Joe, put some Easter eggs up. Let us find those Easter eggs. So yes, in a, in a fighting chance, you'll, you'll see more Easter eggs. Uh, we had a heck of a lot of Easter eggs in a, in a Razor's Edge. And I, I, it may have just blown over people because we have maybe too many. Can you have too many Easter eggs in your, in your basket? Maybe we did. But yeah, there'll, there'll be some, some Easter eggs of what the things that we were trying to do that 
the average fan, it might just go over the head because they weren't looking for it because they were just enjoying the story. What I do, I just like to enjoy the story. But if, when you watch it a second and third time, say, oh, I never noticed that. I never noticed that either. But yeah, we, we tried to put a lot of symbolism and a lot of Easter eggs in our in our mix, so to speak, when you mix, mix that batch of a thing that you call movie making, you know? So uh, yeah, we do that. And we try to make it so the, uh, the ace, uh, there'll be a lot of interwoven. I love the scripts that have the interwoven, how does it come to the climax? So we have a, a merit like a, uh, I like to think of uh, a fighting chance, like the strings of a rope and how all these storylines intertwine to come to the big conclusion, you know, and then hit them with those, uh, what is it, those golden words of, of wisdom at the end, you know, where I remember when I used to watch the original series, how, uh, uh, how Kirk had something, oh, dramatic to say at the end, you know, bam, he got, you know, like, what do you call it, hitting the nail on the head, so to speak. So, so we'll have that, we'll have a lot of charm. We're, uh, we're going to do the same thing like we did in Razor's Edge with having a, a feeling of classic nostalgia. Uh, it'll be campy, uh, uh, which we kind of like. Uh, so yeah, it, it'll be it'll be in there. And we we love the the colors that we have. We're we're playing around with colors some more. I, I think uh, we're going to work with that a lot, and we'll work with a lot of meat and texture, so to speak. A lot more cinematography that uh, we're very excited about too. Uh, to be uh, worked with, but uh, yeah, you'll you'll see a lot of lot more. We're working more with character, so you see that. So.